are going to start now the cable installation by blowing. The blowing technique makes use of different equipment and tools. Some of them are shown on this slide. This is the blowing equipment in different sizes and with different capabilities. We have them from small equipment like handheld sets that can be used for short spans and even relatively long but with very small fibers. So fiber cables between 2 and 12 fibers and 1 millimeter section. The fiber installation by blowing is specified in the ITUT L156. I recommend you read this specification as different blowing machines cover different blowing needs. So we have four different machines here. From the left hand side, the handheld one, to the right hand side, the micro dot bundle one. So with this one, we blow small diameter cables in limited sections with also very limited forces. With this one, on the other side, we are able to blow even micro dot bundles inside conduits, relatively large, with very, very high forces involved in the process and distances that are quite relevant. In between, we have machines that allow us to blow intermediate size cables or ducts. For example, micro cables in this case, over 2 kilometers and 8 millimeter size. Standard cables in this case, over also 2 kilometers and 20 millimeter size. Different airflow capabilities at 10 bar pressure are also playing here a role. You can see on your screens now the uh, tools and equipment required for installation by blowing. So you can see duct cutters, duct couplers, duct slitters, pulling eyes, uh, lubricants, and so on. All fiber technicians are supposed to have those tools in the field. This slide is showing the uh, basic equipment needed for fiber blowing. Fiber blowing is based on high volume airflow injected onto the inner duct at the same time as the cable is pushed in. So fiber blowing is a combination of two installation methods, pushing and blowing. Blowing is the support of the pushing that allows a long distance cable installation. In the drawing we have the blowing machine as such in the middle connected to the micro duct we are installing the uh, cable in obviously fed by the cable reed on the cable and then powered by the hydraulic power source and with the support of the air compressor insufflating air in the blowing machine okay we are going to see now some videos that are going to illustrate how these machines operate all together Remember that when the ambient temperature is higher than 25 degrees centigrade, we install a after cooler in between the air compressor and the blowing machine to make sure that the air insufflated inside is cool enough and is not harming or jeopardizing the installation. Um, you see the um, micro dot reels coupled all together because they have to be obviously unreeling micro ducts at the same speed given that they are subducting with five micro ducts and existing pipe so they are making use of that truck support lifting the uh, micro duct drums now they are in place after opening the handhole here we have the blowing machine with the compressor insufflating air through the yellow hose and the power generator feeding the blowing machine you see the micro ducts coming all together to the machine the five micro ducts in different colors and then they are going to start blowing right now they are blowing the micro ducts inside this black existing duct the micro ducts have to be placed properly not to mess them up and that's basically they couldn't have the uh, 
the micro drums aligned with the blowing machine, so we are having a kind of an issue here because the, the micro ducts are rubbing the, the drum edges, it shouldn't happen, but there is no space to do it better than this. You see the operator here now is pulling by hand or helping, supporting, and avoiding that those micro ducts rub the drum edge. Here you see the belt, both belts, the upper and lower one, they are pushing the cables inside. We're going to try to show you a um, micro cable blowing video. You see the blowing machine is so small because the micro dots that we are blowing uh, are also very thin and light. So compared to the other one, to the previous machine, blowing machine, that was uh, huge because it needed a lot of force pushing and, and airflow volume uh, to be able to uh, uh, blow micro ducts inside a bigger pipe. In this case, with a small machine like this one, is more than enough. So we have, you can see the cable, the micro cable being blown inside this small black micro duct here on the other side. You have the speed there, we were seeing 250 feet per minute, uh, 250 160 feet per minute, which is a um, about 80, 80 meters per minute. <coughs> That's a, a good average speed for a for blowing. Very fast and clean installation. So here on this slide, we have a short description of the uh, main components that we have seen on the uh, previous slide. We have the blowing machine, different sizes as we already know for different applications. We have the hydraulic power pack providing power to the um, installation system, lubricant required in case of excessive uh, friction so that the cable does not go through easily because the duct filling ratio is too high or because the distance is too long. We have the air compressor insufflating air. We have the air cooler, remember, for temperatures that are higher than 25 uh, degrees. We have the uh, pressurization kit that is basically the uh, duct integrity test kit or elements that you need to do the duct integrity test which is a critical test we have always to do before blowing any type of cable or duct. And the cable flitter that allows us to install the cable without doing figure eight. Obviously, the uh, blowing technique is engineered to use primarily micro ducts and micro cables. Any other type of duct or cable can be blown, but we're going to concentrate on the um, micro duct and blown fiber installation from now on. On this slide, we can see at the bottom the same subducting table that we have seen on previous slides. On this uh, intermediate figure here, we can see some micro duct bundles and the composition that we already saw on previous slides. We are only showing here how would the subducting in bigger pipes look like with the cable installed in one of these micro ducts and or an existing copper cable inside a big duct that we subduct to be able to install fiber optic cables later on. On this slide, we are going to see two blowing methods that make use of different installation techniques. The blowing methods are the, the piston type and the laminar flow type. On the um, drawing, you can see the uh, piston type already, how it works. And this piston is actually introducing a third installation method to the blowing technique. As you know, we have said that blowing consists of pushing by the blowing machine belts, and that pushing is supported or assisted by compressed air, making the cable float inside the duct. 
The airtight piston technique uses this piston to pull the cable along the dock. So this uh, technique is actually making use of the three possible cable installation methods. The advantage of this is that the pulling uh, keeps the cable straight, avoiding the buckling effect. This method is particularly adapted for larger dots between 40 and 60 millimeters and it allows to achieve a longer blowing distance in straight route main utilization of this technique. The pulling force is 8 bars because it depends on the compressed air pressure at 8 bars so this is the pulling force at the same time. In comparison to this air piston blowing technique we have the standard laminar flow blowing technique that is the most used worldwide for micro duct and micro cable. You can see that there is no piston this time, so the buckling effect may happen. This is the method preferred, as I said, for micro, and there is no pulling force, it's just pushing force assisted by compressed air. No piston, so no pulling. This technique, because there is no piston potentially getting blocked in bends, is also more adapted for bended routes with a uh, maximum number of bends between 2 and 3 as specified in STC guidelines. Ducts and micro ducts do not come from the manufacturers with an infinite drum length, so uh, we have to make use of couplers for longer distances, longer than the drum length. These couplers are manufactured for the purpose. We have here some M caps and couplers. These on the right hand side actually are not for micro dots. And these couplers to be rated at 12 bars minimum, what we recommend is that they are rated at 14 bar. So there is a safety margin. What factors influence the blowing efficiency? We have to consider that blowing is a mixture of pressure and airflow volume. So the air pressure insufflated in the micro duct has to be in the range of 7 to 11 bars. But at what airflow volume you get this pressure is what defines the efficiency and power of the blowing machine. As we illustrated, the airflow for 10 bars of small machines like this one used for a drop installation is 30 cubic meters per hour, whereas these machines that are insufflating air to install micro ducts inside bigger pipes at 10 bar are capable of injecting up to even 20 times more airflow volume inside the ducts. So the uh, highest blowing efficiency is usually obtained with a duct filling ratio between 35 and 65 percent. With low DFR for a given duct size, we are actually requiring higher airflow volume, which is eventually a constraint when installing cables in large ducts because the volume of air has to be much higher. For low duct filling ratio and large pipes, the airflow to sustain the operational installation pressure of 8 bars must be much higher. So that is imposing a requirement on your blowing machine. However, for the smaller ducts or micro ducts and higher duct filling ratios, the pressure can be kept with a smaller air volume insufflated into the duct. So uh, this is something you guys have to take into account when purchasing the blowing machines and setting them up in the field for a specific installation. The higher range duct filling ratio in the 65 to 75 percent is very efficient in straight routes but when it comes to routes with bends there is a lot of friction produced inside the duct and installation may be compromised so we do not recommend to go uh, so high in the dfr and stay as we said in the range 35 to 65 percent 
Obviously, the uh, coefficient of friction plays an important role in these installations. The coefficient of friction, in fact, varies between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, meaning that the force needed to move the cable inside a straight that is 10% of the cable weight. So if 0 0.1 means that the force to move the cable inside the duct is 10% of the cable weight, a coefficient of friction of 0 0.2 means that the force needed to move the cable inside the flat path is 20% of the cable weight. In order to decrease the coefficient of friction, we use lubricants, as we saw yesterday. So lubricants are highly recommended for blowing distances beyond 500 meters. Do not pour too much lubricant inside the microducts because that would be causing the opposite effect from the one that we want. Other parameters that intervene in the blowing performance are the cable weight, intrinsically included in the coefficient of friction, as we have seen that is uh, directly dependent on the cable weight. But not only the cable weight plays a role, also the cable stiffness does, especially in bended roots. Remember, bended roots do not only mean horizontal bending, it also means vertical bends. So you must instruct your installation crews when they are installing the microducts, new microducts in trenches, to keep them as straight as possible in both horizontal and vertical planes. Other factors that intervene in the uh, blowing performance are the uh, temperature. So we cannot operate at temperatures inside the duct exceeding 50 degrees centigrade. So when the ambient temperature reaches 25 degrees, the use of an after cooler is mandatory between the compressor and the blowing machine. This after cooler is obviously cooling down the air temperature and also removing any moist and dust particles so that the air insufflated in the microduct is perfectly clean and cool. Now we are going to talk about some precautions when blowing. These are important factors that can compromise the installation. So we have here four precautions before you proceed to the blowing. You have to avoid the cable crush. So the proper blowing machine pressure setup has to be done so that the belts or wheels of your blowing machine do not crush the cable. The second thing is the pneumatic system, which is the system that creates the pressurized air. It has to be dimensioned according to the installation requirements and it has to be perfectly maintained so that there is no leakages and all the hoses and connectors are in perfect operation condition. The cleanliness. Obviously, all elements in the blowing installation have to be clean. Ducts, machines, belts, cables, all components in the blowing have to be perfectly clean. And then the last precaution is the duct route avoiding any kinking, avoiding any sharp bending, avoiding bendings as much as possible on the straight roots. Also, keep in mind the length of the duct, because length is a parameter driving the blowing equipment setup. For longer paths, you need higher air volume. Now we are going to talk about the duct integrity test that we mentioned before. This is the most important test you have to mandatory perform before installing any duct, microduct or cable inside conduits. The purpose of this duct integrity test is to verify that the duct end-to-end -end is perfectly operational and ready for blowing. The end-to-end -end section includes the connections in between microducts or dots that happen in the intermediate handholes and manholes. So when you are installing one kilometer section end-to-end -end and you are crossing, say for example, a couple of manholes, these 
dogs and micro dogs that are usually caught in the manholes have to be connected and you do that connection with the couplers the talk integrity test is testing also the uh, operational condition of those couplers so that there is no air leakage or any type of uh, sharp parts in the end-to-end -end installation uh, compromising the blowing. So the uh, duct integrity test is performed with the following tools. Couplers, shuttles or ball chains depending on the size of the duct micro duct. We need sponge and lubricants as well. We need catchers to avoid that all the elements we mentioned before are expelled with high pressure and high force at the far end and injure someone on site and we have the pressure testing kit the duct integrity test is actually a set of tests those tests are the continuity test the sponge test the shuttle test and the pressure test all these four tests together make the duct integrity test as such. We are going to see now one by one what these four tests are all about. So the first one is the continuity test. The continuity test is checking out that the duct sections have been correctly coupled so that there is continuity in the micro duct section end to end. This is verified by introducing compressed air on one end of the duct and checking out that this air comes out at the other end of the duct. If there is no air emerging at the end point, then probably the leakage comes from a coupler okay, that under pressure has uncoupled the ducts or micro ducts because it wasn't correctly installed. Down here we have the sequence of this test and the pressure to be injected at the duct is 10 bars for the continuity test and then checking that the air is coming out at the opposite end if good airflow is coming out the continuity is okay if you see some air coming out but not as expected there may be a loose connector a uh, partial blockage somewhere or maybe the duct at some point is pinched so the, there is air leakage if there is no airflow at all that indicates clearly that one of the connectors has been uncoupled or that there is a complete duct blockage the next test is the sponge test. Once you have performed the continuity test with positive outcome, then you perform the sponge test. That is basically cleaning up the inner walls of the micro duct. This test is especially important when you are blowing on existing ducts that eventually have been installed for a long time and if they were not properly isolated and protected, they may have dirt inside and even being blocked. So the purpose of the sponge test is to clean the duct. The sponge diameter must be approximately twice the inner diameter of the micro duct and 40 to 50 millimeter long, four or five centimeters. This is the procedure. You have to lubricate the sponge slightly and then obviously push it inside the duct and blow the sponge all the way through. Keep in mind that the pressure used to perform the test is also 10 bars, so it's the same pressure as the continuity test. Remember to always use at the far end a catcher because the sponge will come out from the duct at the far end at high speed and with a lot of force and that will be eventually hurting someone so please remember to install the catcher at the far end the next test uh, within the uh, duct integrity test suite is the shuttle test the shuttle test is detecting potential kinks in the installed ducts that is performed after the sponge test so after the duct is clean so this shuttle 
is between 7 and 80 percent of the inner duct diameter and is blown inside with the uh, compressed air. The pressure is 7 bars. Shuttles are replaced by bolts, what we call the bolt chain, for microducts. So in microducts, you are not supposed to blow a shuttle inside, but a bolt chain. You have a table down here showing the size of the uh, shuttle. You see that for small microducts, 5, 6, 7, 8 millimeters, you use a chain bolt. Even for 10, 12, 14, you should not use shuttles, but bolt chains. Eventually, from 16 onwards, yes, you can use shuttles. Remember that the size of the shuttle is about 70 to 80 percent of the inner duct diameter. The shuttle is obviously expected to come all the way through so that you get it at the far end of the duct. If that's not the case, this is showing up that there is a kink in the microduct. So the pressure for this test is 7 bar. 5 minutes is a reference of the time that the shuttle or the ball chain takes to go from one end to the other one in a one kilometer installation. With this reference, you calculate how much time you need for your actual installation, that may be 500 meters, or maybe 100 meters, or maybe two kilometers. So you have a reference to calculate the time you should expect the shuttle to come out from the duct or microduct. Last test in the duct integrity test suite is the air pressure test. It is helping identify pressure leakage or damaged ducts. We inject pressure on one end and see how this pressure stays stable inside the duct by measuring that pressure at the far end. So we inject compressed air at 7 bar, allowing the pressure to build up for 5-10 minutes, depending on the length of the microdot section. When we are reading 7 bars at the gauge, close the inlet valve so that the duct remains pressurized and wait for a couple of minutes and see how the pressure is dropping and it has to drop by less than 1.5 bars per 2 minutes. If the pressure drop is within that range, the test passed. Otherwise, something has happened. Maybe there is air leakage in couplers or ducts that you have to re-verify. So with these four tests, we have completed the duct integrity test. There is a final last test called the crash test. The crash test is helping you set the proper parameters in the blowing machine so that the installation goes smoothly and performs as expected. The crash test is trying to measure the exact point of pushing force that causes cable buckling in your installation. So the settings are not the same from one installation to the other one because the duct length, the cable diameter, the uh, bending is different. Even if the duct size and the cable diameter are the same, the section length and the bends in that section may significantly change the pushing force that creates buckling. What you do is that you are pushing the cable into the duct with the air blowing machine as if you were blowing the cable, but set the pushing force to a very high value causing purposely cable buckling in the installation. So when this happens or the cable gets jammed in the duct, this is the extreme pushing force you never have to get to. Then reduce the value of the pushing force to 80% of that value and you have the exact force you need to use to perform a smooth blowing in that installation. Last point on the blowing procedure is about safety. So we will never insist enough on the safety procedures only qualified operators must use these blowing machines equipped with the proper uh, protection equipment. 
ear protection, gloves, etc. Remember that these equipment are hot and they have moving parts and the, um, the proper communication mechanism has to be set between the operators on site and the health and safety crew. We have already mentioned that microducts and ducts have to be protected against foreign objects, dust, moisture, water, and any other potential contaminant. So when you install uh, ducts and microducts, you uh, protect them with end caps. We have on the left hand side of the screen an end cap. Each duct manufacturer specifies their own couplers and end caps. So please use those, not any other. So if you purchase microducts from a given manufacturer, also purchase these accessories, couplers and end caps from the same manufacturer. Ideally, if you guys are installing microduct section that covers quite a long distance, the microducts in the intermediate manholes or handholes should not be cut. They should be slacked without cutting. If you cannot do that and you have to cut the microducts in the handhole, then you have to protect them with caps, as we have said, M caps. And when or while performing the duct integrity test and the crash test, those end caps have to be replaced by couplers so that you give continuity to the duct installation end to end. Even when uh, you install cables or subduct bigger ducts, as you see in, in the picture, with the smaller ducts, with micro ducts, you have to use special end caps that are allowing the micro ducts and cables pass through. You can see here the ones that are specifically designed for cables and here the ones that are specifically designed for micro ducts. These caps are mandatory. You have to install them, always install them, even if there are cables or micro ducts passing through. These fittings have to come from the same duct manufacturer. Remember that we are pressure rating these devices because these are not used to blow any cables or any microducts inside since they are already blown. Instead of being rated at 14 bars, they are rated at 0 0.5 bars. This last slide is about troubleshooting and um, finding the causes why your blowing installation may not be performing properly actually is kind of insisting in all the points that we have already made in the previous slides and especially on the duct integrity test importance because most of these things can be cleared by doing a proper DIT prior to blowing the cable. So the major causes of problems are listed down here. So it's a pressure leakage is something that you can detect and fix by means of the DIT the cable getting stuck as well, a proper duct integrity test detects this. High friction forces also are detected by the DAT. The last one, the not enough airflow, is actually a wrong blowing machine setup. So you are not having the optimum combination of air pressure and airflow in the blowing machine settings. The typical errors made during cable blowing are listed down here. Sometimes the cause of the problems comes from the cables themselves. So not a problem in STC because we have already tested and validated both dock manufacturers and cable manufacturers. But even though in some cases we can find situations, for example, with jacket materials that are increasing the coefficient of friction because of the cable outer sheath material itself, typically the case for indoor cables like plenum cables or low smoke zero halogen cables. A uh, poor quality of the cable may also be the cause of this difficulty in installing but as I said all our cables are pre-approved by STC so it shouldn't be the case for you guys in the field. Now the cable may have a strong bending memory and or be very rigid, very stiff. This is also potentially impacting the installation. This material is not your responsibility, it's STC's responsibility, so the cables must be suited for purpose.
provided that you purchase and install the approved docs from STC, there should be no problems. STC has a set of pre-approved manufacturers providing the quality for docs that we are expecting. If that's not the case and you're purchasing poor quality ducts, they may cause problems with, for example, the coefficient of friction, or they may be damaged and kinked easily. The couplings also, if they are of bad quality, may cause leakage and prevent from having a smooth installation. The bending radius, remember to respect the bending radius. For micro ducts, we are actually recommending to be 30 times the outer diameter. Additional errors can be made during blowing to use the wrong combination of cable and duct. These two elements may not be compatible when it comes to the materials they are made of. And also, we may have too high or too small duct filling ratio beyond the capabilities of your blowing machine. A duct filling ratio too low challenges the uh, blowing machine capability to inject compressed air in enough quantity. Remember, if the pressure and air volume is not enough inside the duct, you may be causing cable buckling. If the duct filling ratio is too high, there would be high friction, so the distance would be dramatically reduced, especially if there are duct bends in the root, and or if the cable has a strong bending memory, as we mentioned before. Poor lubrication is a common mistake, as well as excessive lubrication is another mistake. So the proper quantity of lubricant has to be used follow the lubricant manufacturer's recommendations. The last one again is the blowing machine. You may be using a blowing machine not suit for purpose. There are many blowing machines in the market. You have to select the right machine providing enough airflow volume and enough pressure for your installations.